All right, good morning. I'm going to go ahead and call the meeting to order. Looks like we've got um, everyone here we need, or almost everyone here we need. Um, my name is Maria Wegg. I'm with the Office of Community Engagement here at the City of Boise. Um, welcome to the special events meeting. Just a couple things. Um, it is a public meeting, and I believe we are live streaming. So even though we don't have masks anymore, we still do need to use mics so that the um, audio system can pick that up so that folks who are remote can hear as well. Um, and mind your P's and Q's because it is a public meeting. So don't say anything that will embarrass yourself or your mom. Um, let's go around the in-person room first and then the virtual room for introductions. And then, um, Julia, if you and your team want to come up to the table, and I think you're first on the docket. Let's start with Conrad. Conrad McDaniel, Republic Services. Vince Vergara, City of Boise Parking. Sabrina Bobo, City of Boise Risk Management. Summer Altieri, Boise Parks and Rec. Andre Womack, Downtown Boise Association. Jesse Tappert, Boise Fire. Jill Dathman, Boise Fire. Dwight Kirkland, Boise Police. Jeff Nia, Boise Police. Matthew Convalenko, Boise Police. Rachel Hilford, City of Boise Emergency Management. And Kelly Frank, City Clerk's Office. All right, now we are going to go online ACHD. John, are you there? All right. Sorry, I'm here. Maria? <laughs> yes. I'm here. Would you like to introduce yourself, John? John Watson, Ada County Highway District. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Leslie? Uh, Leslie Pedroza, Valley Regional Transit. Dinko? Dinko Milkovic, Central District Health. And Cameo? Cameo Aikens, Ada County Paramedics. Great, thank you. All right, first up, I think we have music on the water. Yeah, hi guys, thanks for having us again. Um, I'm Julia, for those I haven't met yet, and then this is Tyler, our Director of Vendor Operations, Roger, my event manager, and Connor, one of our event coordinators. Um, is the presentation, sorry, Kelly, did you get that? Because I have a flash drive too, if not. Oh yeah, let me pull it off. Yeah. Cool. So um, just to kind of get it started, good to see you guys. Um, so just for this one, we'll do an overview of the event. Um, everything is very similar to last year. So we're really looking forward to having it again. Um, we'll go through the event details, our venue layout, the map as well, our security plan, dumpster waste, and then the Make-A-Wish walk that we have uh, during the event. So just to kind of go through it, um, this is the third year that the Go Agency has had music on the water, but it's a fifth year event. So we're really excited to keep bringing it back. We have a lot of fun doing it. Um, this year, it'll be on June 3rd and 4th, and the times for the event itself will be 4 to 9 on day one, and then 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. on day two. We're planning on setting up, if possible, the night before on the second, just to get some of our bigger items into the lot. Um, we'll be bringing a Vino's trailer, just like last year. That we'll want to keep overnight and then we'll also come back on the third and start our setup at 8 a.m um, we'll tear down immediately after the event on the fourth from nine to midnight and then we'll come back the morning of the fifth to make sure that we've gotten everything out of the park and grab anything that might have been uh, left overnight so the same layout as last year we'll start kind of in that lower type of lot 
we're doing the main stage in the same spot as last year with the back right up to the river. Um, we will have a beer garden down there as well, but this year we are not bringing that giant inflatable tent like we did last year. Um, we will keep it to a normal size tent this year to make it easy on everyone. Um, and down there, we'll also have some bounce houses for our kids zone and a few vendors and sponsors. And then up kind of in that upper lot, um, we'll be doing a very similar setup with vendors up there as well. And the beer garden in that gazebo where we'll fence it off and have security posted as well. And then this year, we're also adding one bounce house up there as well, just to kind of keep the traffic flow going. And then along um, that purple line as well, we'll have some vendors and food trucks, things like that. And then we'll do ADA parking in that first section as well, just like last year. For our sanitation this year, we'll be doing another very similar setup. Um, we'll be providing hand sanitizer and wipes on all of the tables where we're allowing patrons to sit and eat and enjoy the music. Um, we'll be doing 20 standard porta potties through United States Services, just like last year, with three ADA compliant and 15 hand washing stations. Um, this year, we're going to put them in the same spots, but for neon nights, which I'll get into, we'll add some more down in that lower lot where that event will take place. Uh, we'll have masks, masks available at the information booth. Um, I know restrictions have been lifted, but some people still like them, so we'll have them on hand. For security, we'll have 10 security guards stationed throughout the venue, and I'll get into their um, specific spots next. We'll be using Protector Services of Idaho again. And then um, for a lost and found or child, like lost child, like information booth, will be um, the GO agency tent and a security tent right next to each other that'll be labeled. So in this main beer garden, main stage area, we're gonna have four security guards at all the entry points to make sure that there's no alcohol leaving that area. Additionally, checking wristbands, things like that, and making sure the flow is working with everyone. And then we'll have one guard within that um, fenced off area, just roaming to check on things and keep an eye on everything. In our upper beer garden area, we'll have one to two security guards in that gazebo spot to make sure the same thing happens, no alcohol in or out. And then we'll also have um, someone just patrolling that upper lot as well. For the ADA parking spot where that um, yellow kind of block is, we'll also have a security guard there to be able to move that sign for the ADA compliant vehicles. And then with any questions, he'll be able, he or she will be able to direct um, cars throughout the venue or out of the venue. So part of our ingress, egress, like traffic plan with this is just like last year, we're going to have signage posted right along that road heading into the Esterson Plot Park, like kind of around those neighborhoods, um, directing everyone to kind of go through that loop. And if needed, they can turn right near Idaho River Sports into that secondary lot or exit. Um, we'll be doing notifications as well, some direct mailers to that surrounding neighborhood that I'll pass along to you guys once we have them written out. For the rest of it, kind of with our evacuation zones, if anything should happen, the plan is to have everyone go to one of those three lots, which are the ITD parking lot, the CWI parking lot, and a parking lot at the Riverside. Um, we've worked with all three lots before, and it's worked out pretty well. And knock on wood, we've never had to use that plan, and I hope that doesn't change this year either. And we'll also have additional parking at the Riverside. For our dumpster, um, we're gonna go through Republic Services again. We're wanting to put it in the same location as last time. It worked out really well and we'll have golf carts driving trash out throughout the event. Uh, because we'll be having a run with this as well, we're gonna go a little bit bigger on that size just because there's gonna be additional waste that we didn't have last year. And then lastly, the Make-A-Wish Walk. Uh, Make-A-Wish comes every year on the first day and they set up their own little tent, little area and they do a wish walk throughout the venue where they essentially get 20 minutes on stage, they play a video, they talk about the wish families that are there, and then they walk um, kind of the perimeter of the park that I'll show on that next slide. So that's their little route. Um, they're right behind the kids zone and they'll do their walk. Um, they bring a balloon arch most of the time that they'll have anchored down, all that kind of stuff. And then they don't come on Saturday, but they leave their tent up since we do our order together. So it'll get picked up at the same time as our tent. And that's kind of it for music on the water. I can, would you guys prefer that I go right into Neon Nights and do questions at the end for both or what's easiest? Yeah, I go ahead and do that. Okay, great.
it's all going to be very similar. We're mooching off each other, which is good that we're putting it on together. <laughs> um, so Neon Knights will be on. Oh. <laughs> So Neon Nights will be on June 4th, and we're running it in conjunction with Music on the Water, similar to how uh, the Boise Women's Classic has gone with Music on the Water in the past. We're just kind of rebranding it, reimaging it, and making it more of a fun run than what Women's Classic had been. So for Neon Nights, it is a first-year event. This year, it'll only be a 5K, 10K. We're not doing the half marathon just because it is later on in the evening, and we don't want anyone out too later out on the green ball when it gets really dark. Um, we'll begin our setup for that during Music on the Water on June 4th. We have two separate teams made up of our internal staff that'll go out and do the Green Belt course while the rest of the staff are on site for Music on the Water. Um, our registration for that will be 5 p.m. on the day of, and then the race will start at 6 p.m. And we're also allowing attendees to do their packet pickup or registration on June 3rd at Music on the Water. And then we're additionally doing um, a pickup day at Shoes Running Store like we usually do. So this is our 10K course map and aid station, and I'll pass along the interactive link to this as well, because I know it's a little difficult to see on the screen. Um, it's the exact same route as the spring run, just counterclockwise and leaving Esther Simplot instead of Julia Davis. So we'll have runners exit that lower part of Esther Simplot and go straight across the Whitewater Bridge and turn left. They'll run all the way down the Greenbelt and go down to that out and back right in front of uh, the Broadway Bridge. They won't be crossing any bridges or anything like that. And we'll also have an aid station positioned right there to ensure no one overdoes it. Then they'll turn around, they'll take a right across Friendship Bridge, a left into Julia Davis, and come all the way back up the green belt back into Esther Simplot. Um, along this course, there's going to be four aid stations with eight to 10 volunteers. So we'll have two volunteers per aid station. And then at some of the confusing spots, we'll also have course flaggers instead and signage, of course. Um, the 5K follows the exact same thing as well. They'll exit Esther Simplot, go across the Whitewater Park Bridge, make that left, and they'll run down to the Ann Morrison Park Bridge. And at that point, there's gonna be a 5K specific turn sign where they'll cross that bridge, make the left and head back up into the park as well. Um, during that, they'll hit three of our aid stations that'll have six volunteers as well. This is kind of the venue layout for Neon Nights. Um, it's obviously the same as Music on the Water, just that lower lot. We're gonna have another registration tent area where they'll also be able to get their medals and um, some finisher food. And then labeled on there, we also have bike parking, which is something we do at Music on the Water. We're just kind of shifting it more on one side than in that whole area, so there's room for that. Um, and then this course start line will be approximately 75 kilometers back just per the distancing to make sure we hit the right mileage. Um, for our emergency services and security on this, we've submitted some paperwork to Ada County Paramedics um, in February of 2022. And then with the security we already have at uh, Music on the Water, they're also in the loop on Neon Nights. So they'll be doing a routine kind of loop around that lower area as well as doing their music on the water stations as well. Yeah. Um, and then all of our aid stations will have first aid kits. All attendees will have pulse point. And then similar to spring run, we'll have a sheet at every aid station that'll tell them the closest major road to their aid station in case someone has to call 911 and an ambulance needs to come. Um, on top of that, with our safety plan, like I touched on, Protector Services is aware of the event. Um, they'll do their routine check like they usually do. There won't be any beer down in that area, so we won't need any wristbanding or anything like that. Um, our primary form of communication with all the aid station attendees and our course directors will be radios. And then when those radios are out of range, it'll be cell phones. Um, everyone will have a contact sheet and an order of who to contact if they need like more water, more band-aids, they need someone to get picked up, all that kind of stuff. Oh, and then on top of that, with um, a good chunk of it starting in Garden City, technically, we've permitted with them as well, so they're aware of the event. Um, signage for this, uh, on top of it, very similar to Spring Run, we'll be doing um, turn arrows, straight arrows, and then we'll also do distance-specific signage where it'll say like 5K left only, 10K straight, turn around, all that kind of stuff. 
Um, the course will also be broken up into two sections and they'll have a designated course director to contact if they need to resupply on anything. Someone needs to be picked up. Um, they'll be on golf carts and they'll remain out on the course until the last runner is done. Um, we'll also have printed out versions of our map at registration. That way runners have the ability to look at it beforehand. They'll also have access to the Google Maps link so they can follow it along on their phone as well. For our sanitation and cleanup, um, like I touched on, since music on the water and neon nights are happening together, we're gonna go a little bit bigger on our dumpster and recycle size. We're thinking of 40 yard for this one. Um, we do generate a little bit more waste with this being like the cups on the course, um, the electrolyte wrappers, stuff like that. So every aid station will have two cardboard um, trash and recycle boxes next to them. And those will be taken out to the dumpsters as well. And then all aid station attendees are instructed to just spot clean because as talented as these runners are, I know you can miss a bucket sometimes. So we know there's going to be some cups and stuff around there. So we'll make sure all that gets cleaned up as well. And we'll do that additional sweep on uh, the fifth, like I talked about with Music on the Water. Um, the Finisher Festival is Music on the Water. We're estimating that by the time all distances are done, there's still going to be music on the stage. All of our vendors will still be open. And then Tyler has been working on getting us some finisher food, like some water bottles, bananas, stuff like that, that we can hand out as they come back into the venue. And that's it. Awesome. Thank you. You always do such good comprehensive presentations. Appreciate <laughs> that you. a lot. Um, all right. We will, just as we did introductions, we'll start with the folks that are in the room. Conrad. Thank you. And good morning. Uh, if memory serves me right, uh, last year we came up with about 24 cubic yards of waste. Mm -hmm. Does that sound right? So, yeah, 40 yards a good idea cool. um, this year. So, thank you for doing that. Have those been ordered? No, we're waiting to get a little bit closer to the event to place that order. Okay, that's totally fine. I was just trying to look for it yesterday, couldn't yeah. find it. So, <laughs> that uh, that works. And um, I know where you're talking about putting them, and that's that's good. It's summer's not in her head, so <laughs> we're all on the same page. Uh, but if I could get a map of where those go, even though we all know where they are, uh, the driver might not. So it'd just be helpful. Yeah, definitely. And are you planning on having those delivered on the second since you're setting up? Or? Okay. Either the second or the third, 8 a.m. when we start our setup internally, that'd be great. Okay. Yeah, usually they'll deliver early in the morning. Um, things happen, so it's not always guaranteed. If you're going to be on site and setting up and it's okay with parks, uh, it's probably easier to get, get them there on the second. Great. Um, and then... Um, uh, Kelly, did I'm sorry if I missed this, but is Ed on the call? Okay, so I'll I'll just kind of ask some of his questions. Have you been in contact with Ed yet? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, you have your own boxes, right? Yes. Okay, and he can help provide signage if you need for recycling and all that good stuff. Okay, yeah. great. We'll be bringing. Um, I don't think I said this during music on the water. We have like a hundred of them, and we'll do some stickers that we can print in house that'll say trash and recycle. And then we'll have volunteers throughout the event um, pulling those bags, replacing them, and taking them to the dumpster. Okay, awesome. Thank you. And for the recycling, if if they're collected in bags, uh, we don't want you to throw the bag in the dumpster, empty the content contents out loose, and then throw away the bag. Got it. Yeah. And then, it, it, is it going to be beer cups or cans? It should be cans, correct? Cans. Cans. Awesome. Mm -hmm. All right. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, Julia. Um, I don't have any concerns in parking. Um, the only uh, thing that we were uh, needing is uh, the neighborhood notification, a copy of that. But I think that you're going to get that to Kelly, and then maybe we can pull that from Kelly. Yes, we have a group kind of working on the verbiage of that now, and then we're planning on sending them out that first week of May, so it's a month in advance. Nice. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, and I think I, I don't think we've seen insurance yet, but maybe waiting to get closer to the date. Okay. Mm -hmm. Our insurance policy for all of our events will start May first, so when I get that, I can send that to Kelly as well. That way, everyone receives it. Sounds good. 
Hello, hello. You guys did a great job last year changing all the things that we were asking for like ADA parking and security, everything. So you did a great job. I'm excited to see it come back. Um, I don't have a lot of questions. I am just wondering, are you gonna have a large tent set up on the second or do you just wanna bring vendors? We're just or gonna end up doing kind of a preliminary setup where we'd bring in that Vino's and in the Vino's we'd have that like bike rack, we'd have signs, stuff like that. That way it's already there. Okay. So on the third, we can pull them. Okay. Our tents with event rents, we're planning on having delivered that morning on the third. There shouldn't be any overnight. Okay, that's fine. We just want to make sure our irrigation schedule is not watering your guys' tents and things like <laughs> that. So we'll turn off on that. Um, I think that one is it. Um, just so you guys know, neon lights will in the parks, the way that we're looking at it is that it will always be part of music on the water. So mm -hmm. if you switch a date, it's it always has to be music on the water. That's your guys' one grandfathered in Perfect. event. So just so you guys know that. Other than that, we can just keep working on it. I don't have any questions this time. Thanks. I think we're good. Yeah. Cool. All right. Good morning. Um, so of course, need your special events permit. I think you mm -hmm. know that already. Um, food trucks. Um, kind of changing it up a little bit. Uh, we're going to need you to, of course, disseminate the information for the fire inspection requirement to all your vendors. Um, but we'd like to ask that you get confirmation that they've actually received that information. Uh, they should all know they're, they're supposed to have their fire department inspection, but we're finding out that uh, a lot of them are saying we, we didn't know. So uh, get, get confirmation after you send the, the information. And could you please also send me a list of all your food truck vendors and um, when they do show up to the event, they should have a blue sticker that indicates that they had a fire department inspection. If, you, if they can't produce that, if you don't see that, you probably should just turn them around and, and tell them to leave because when we get there, we're going to shut them down. And I think we did shut down one of one food truck last time. So just let's be on top of that. So they don't like shutting people down. So um, the other thing is just maintain fire access like you did last year. You guys did a good job of that. Um, I'm glad to um, hear that you're not doing that inflatable tent. It was a nice tent. We worked <laughs> through it. We got through all the issues last time, but um, I think that does simplify a lot, a lot of things with the, just having a regular tent. So thanks for doing that. Appreciate that. Other than that, I have no other concerns or issues. Hey, Jesse, I did have a question for you. Um, I had sent over an email with you, Kelly and Julia that had fire suppression system permits copies of them with okay. a list of the food trucks to your email. Okay. Um, if you didn't receive that, I can definitely resend that for you. No, I think I did. I okay. I did. Cause yeah, everybody that I've received thus far, I've made sure that they've sent me a copy of their permit for their mobile license and their, and their fire suppression system, if they have one. And I've sent that over accordingly. So if you have not received that, please do let me know. So that way I can make sure you see them. Okay. I think I did. Okay. So, awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Operationally, we're good. I like the map. Looks good. I appreciate the pulse point and putting that out to your people and things like that. So it looks good from our end. Yeah, we're good as well. We have the contract and we'll be putting that out for higher, uh, a little closer to the event. So we're, we're good as well. Perfect. Very, very well done, you guys. Thank you so much for this. Um, I know we've been working with you for the last little while and this is really where we've been wanting to see you guys get to. So congratulations. This is awesome. I don't have any questions, um, which is amazing. So really just need to make sure that we get um, the maps. If anything changes, make sure you get that over to Kelly so that we can share that. And then we'll get that out to emergency services and just echoing, um, making sure that ingress, egress is clear, um, that any emergency services can get through there if needed. So really nicely done. Thanks. Um, I will also mimic what Rachel said. Um, appreciate the communication, uh, the continued details. Um, obviously more emails are better than less emails. Um, a lot of moving parts and it's coming together nicely. You guys did a great job last year. Just a reminder that the Greek food festival is across um, Whitewater Boulevard. Um, that's grown over the years, but um, they do manage it pretty well in their facility, but just a little bit of extra traffic and stuff in the area to be aware of. Um, and then also just uh, kind of mirroring what Summer said as far as the special events permit for the clerk's office. We did talk early on, but it may have been with Lauren. Mm -hmm. um, right now, we just have this as one permit for the race and the festival. Right. But if things change over the years, um, 
things get bigger routes. I mean, just anything we'll evaluate that every year um, and may have to separate it into two permits, two fees, but we'll just um, see how things go and keep in touch on that as well. Okay, great. Thank you. All right, moving online, John. John, anything from ACHD? Sorry about that. The phone muted. Um, I did not see any road closures. Is that correct? Correct. Are you going to be having any signage in the right of way, Julia? Yes, we will. So we'll be putting as much directional signage as we can, just so everyone's aware. We'll do event ahead A-frames. That way, um, whoever's driving past is aware. Okay. Then we will need a, uh, a permit from you guys to be able to set those out in the right of way. Okay. Is that the type B permit that I've done in the past? Um, we'll chat offline on that one. Okay. Okay. Um, if you're not closing any roads and just putting signage out, I'm not sure I, I don't want to ding you too badly. So we, we can talk offline on that. If you'll give me a call probably mm -hmm. tomorrow in the office, uh, we can figure this out. Perfect. Other than that, nothing else from ACHD. Great. Thank you. Leslie. Nothing from us. We're good. Awesome. Dinko. So Tyler Gibson has been in communication with our front office. And as of today, we have a full list of vendors and all of them are either approved or will be approved. So you're good to go. And if anything changes, then just please let us know. Yes, sir. Yeah, I, my plan as of right now is to receive three more in total and then be done. And so I'll be working on those this week. And as I receive their permits and all of that information, I'll be forwarding that to you guys as well as we've done previously. Sounds good. Thank you, Tyler. Yes, sir. And last but not least, Cameo. Hi, good morning. I just had a couple of clarify, clarifying questions. So you had mentioned reaching out to ACP for, um, was that just for the run? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then for the um, music on the water, what was there any first aid stations um, set up last year or what was the plan for medical during last the day? Um, last year, we had um, first aid kits at our GO Agency tent, and we had security kind of notify anyone if they needed anything to go there. And then protector services themselves, each security or each security agent walks around with their own like smaller version of that as well. And they have like ice packs, band-aids, like kind of standard stuff. Okay. And about how many, I didn't see this, my apologies, about how many people do you expect for the event? For music on the water between the two days, we see an average of 6,000 to 11,000 people. Okay. And for neon nights, I'm estimating 200 to 300 runners just because it is a first year event. But I do give a bigger range on that just because we'll be advertising it on the third. So we might get some like day of walk-ups, things like that. Okay, perfect. That's all I needed. Thank you. Great. Thanks so much. Good job. I don't know that I've ever seen Rachel not have a question. So <laughs> you should take that as a feather in your cap, drink a little champagne, take the rest of the day off. Connor, are you running the race? Yeah. Um, no, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> We're right, keeping thanks. him out of it. He'll win. Yeah. So yeah, we yeah. got it. <laughs> awesome. Thanks so much, you guys. Cool. Thank you, everyone. Yep. Thank you. Uh, next up, YMCA Capital Classic Kids Run. Welcome back, Allison. And Allison, if you can just press the button to the little light. Yep. There we go.
Great. Okay, so I'm Allison from the YMCA and we are bringing back the Capital Classic Kids Run. Um, it's been a couple years, so we're super excited to, to be back. And this clicker's new, so let's see if I... <laughs> um, so we are hope, hoping for about 1,200 kids on June 4th for the Capital Classic. Um, that is more than it was in 2019. We're hoping that people are excited to come back out and to enjoy the event. Um, so the Capital Classic is a children's race only, um, so 6 to 14 years old um, for all abilities. Uh, we do a small course for um, children that need to be assisted, so we'll start a little closer to the finish line to make it about a block. Um, <clears throat> but they start at the, the Boise Train Depot and then run down Capitol to the um, Capitol and to the park at Cecil D. Anders Park. So um, let's see what else. We and then we also have people that will run with the kids if they want to run the full course to help um, make sure everyone gets down there. So um, let's see. So, and it is a combination and partnership with St. Alphonsus. So they, um, we've teamed up with them. The event has been a tradition of theirs for many years and we help coordinate um, the event side of it and help run that side so that they can come out and celebrate with us instead of having to worry about all these details. <laughs> so at this point, we're going to have um, whole fruit from Albertsons, um, probably bananas and oranges um, that we'll hand out. We'll have chocolate milk from Metal Gold, and then we'll have bottled water from um, Squire Coca-Cola. Um, we are looking at having um, <clears throat> a water vendor there that does water filtration and then puts them in recyclable cups so that we can get away from the bottles. Um, I'm not sure if they're able to come yet, but I'll add that if we need to. Um, and that, that's a big change from, for, from the Capital Classic in the past. It used to have sandwiches and cookies and frozen yogurt and all of that. And we're just, we're not ready to do that. Um, and a lot of our vendors are not ready to come back for that as either, either. So um, we're trying to see if we can kind of change up the event a little bit. Um, then all of our vendors that will be in the finish line at Cecil D. Anders, um, this is a few of them. So ICCU, the Y will have a tent from Child Development, um, STARS, Urban Air, Bandana, we'll have a photo booth for the kids. Um, those will be set up within the park there in just 10 by 10 tents, nothing bigger than that. Um, and they should be, should be simple, easy around the park there. So the traffic control plan um, has, is going to change. I've reached out to ACHD as well as the police. Um, the market is not in the area anymore. And so it makes it different, which um, ACHD, um, Debbie sent me a message and we talked about it and we, I was not, I, kind of forgot that the market has moved. So um, as we've done in the past, we'll still um, be closing the roads, but it'll be a little bit different once we get that new plan, which I'll update everyone on. Um, and we'll be working with the police to make sure we can figure out what to do in ACHD. We will have digital readers um, the week before letting everyone know. Um, we will also be working with uh, Boise Motor Escort to help close the roads, as well as having um, barricades dropped and candles dropped where our volunteers are along Capitol Boulevard. Um, we also notify the neighborhood above um, above Amorson Park over by the train depot um, and give them notices. We put out signs ahead of time about um, a week and a half just to let them know that the event will be coming and that the road will be closed. Um, besides those three digital readers, so um, well that's going to be a little different this year. <laughs> Um, and this talks about the neighborhood notices, which um, we'll get a copy of that um, to you guys. And then we also go through downtown um, and just let all the businesses know. And we've worked with um, the Boise, Downtown Boise Association to get their form to go and have the businesses sign and let them know that we're coming. Um, and we'll be posting signs up at the depot as well so that people aren't parking overnight from the weddings that are gonna be taking place the night before and then that evening. Um, I've requested a dumpster and recycling bin um, for down at the park. So it'll be um, in two parking spots and I've got the permit through ACHD for that. Um, so we'll get those placed. And then we also have our own trash boxes. We'll get a few of the recycling bins um, <clears throat> from, um, from Ed when we get a little bit closer. 
So this is the starting area. So we start up at the depot um, and it's hard to tell, but we stage all of the kids in the parking lot at the depot and in the grass. And then we bring them down around um, on the road. I think it's east over in front and they come down and we place them on Capitol Boulevard. Um, <clears throat> and we hold them there until the traffic is all cleared off the road. And then we send them down and we have figured out in the past couple of years that we start them all together. So the boys and girls used to go at separate times, which had us hold traffic even longer. So we're, we send them all together now. So, and then this is the finish fair area. So we'll put up those tents in the park. Um, it shows that the dumps where the dumpsters are going to be on sixth and Bannock there in those parking spots. Um, we'll have restrooms that are placed on the grass, um, not on the sidewalk, but facing in towards the park so that the kids don't come around, um, things like that. And then the finish line is right there on Bannock before you go um, any further on Capitol area into between the parks um so they'll we kind of guide the kids through that intersection and into the grass and onto that road they grab their water their metal and then come into the finish fair um, and you'll see that there's barricades we do um we were just we were encouraged to close jefferson and bannock um well jefferson just in case um, we have so many kids and they run out the road and we don't want anyone um, driving through there and not paying attention. So we have we do close that for um, a short period of time while the kids are coming in and finishing, so. And then this is this is the past map. Um, so obviously we're not doing Blimpy or TCBY, but this is an idea of what it looks like. We use those flags um, for the kids to find their meeting spot. So every child will be given a bib number and on the back of it, it, we ask for a contact number for a parent, their name, and then what color of flag they're meeting their parent or guardian at. So those are placed around the park. That way, if they need help finding someone, we can help identify where they need to go and send them in the right direction. Um, and that's, we aren't, this map is just, it's just an idea of where where people will be. We try and set the vendors up so that the people are walking along the sidewalk and visiting the vendors. So they're not trampling all over the grass. Um, hopefully it's not snowing like it is today, but you never know. Um, <clears throat> Uh, and then for first aid, we have about 17 stations along our one mile course. Um, St. Alphonsus is happy to help us with this. They have lots of volunteers that come out about every block. We have um, a cart that has first aid, water, and a volunteer to help in case someone falls down and scrapes their knees, which is mostly what happens in this event. Um, they get so excited and then they trip over their feet and um, there's someone there to help them. So, and then as I said, each child will have um, their their color of the flag where they're going to meet their parents on the back of their bib, as well as some contact information in case we need to help them. Um, and then we're encouraging the participants. To, so with this race, um, St. Alphonsus has done a great job of having their the parents drop off the kids at the depot. It's a drive-through drop-off. They drop them off. Parents are not allowed to get out. They send them to a volunteer. We line them up by age and they go and park. So um, we encourage them to park downtown in the garages. Um, they get that free hour of parking. I have um, reached out, I'm reaching out to um, the, the parking garages about possibly giving in a reduced rate for that second hour to see if maybe we can do something there just to keep them downtown for a little bit longer after the event um, and then encourage them to use the garages. So, um, and there will be street parking. We used to, we used to pay to close those spots um, on Capitol. And we just, if we're closing their road, we don't really need to take those spots. Um, and if they are there, they're just not gonna be able to move, which if you park in a spot where the road's closed, that's what happens. So um, so I've worked with parking on that. So we've, we've taken our spots to make sure our volunteers have spots and things like that, but we're really encouraging them to use the parking garages downtown. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, this is it, just these old, the past photos, um, and that's it. Great, thank you so much. Um, I'm gonna mix things up and start with our online panelists. Uh, John. Good, good morning, Allison, how are you? I'm good, John, how are you? I'm well, thank you. So, 
<laughs> um, as you've noticed, there are some changes and more changes coming. I think that your event is going to be okay with regards to construction in the downtown core. Um, it's early enough in the season that uh, there is some po possible construction in, in later June and July, but I think 9th and Bannock is going to be available, so we'll be able to fit you in there. Um, craft control is going to be a bear, and you're probably going to have to rely a little bit more on police than you have in the, in the past because Front, Myrtle, and um, um, Idaho are all pretty important corridors to get people through this time of year. Uh, we'll work with you on the traffic control plan, and we are very excited that you guys are back. Unfortunately, that's not the week we get our granddaughter, so she will not be able to participate in the event. Darn it. Maybe we can still give her a medal. <laughs> Sean, maybe well, you can run in her place. <laughs> yeah. That was more fun. <laughs> well, you know, I'm, I'm just a big kid. But uh, <laughs> no, this, this is always a very, very well-organized, very well-run event. And other than the police using a helicopter as traffic control device one year, it's gone swimmingly. <laughs> we won't be bringing any helicopters in you won't be but what about the police <laughs> i can't pay for that so that's okay <laughs> but we look forward to having you this year allison thank you thanks john thanks john leslie good morning could i just get a little bit more clarity on what streets you're closing is it just capital and what's the span of the area you're closing so it's we close from um, capitol boulevard right at the um the the turn or i guess it's yes it's capitals you're coming down so capitol boulevard right at the depot area we stop it about 9 40 we stop traffic and we're really only closing the road for maybe 30 minutes as the kids maybe 40 at the most as the kids come out onto the road and run down the area and they run all the way to bannock and so in order to, and then we cross them over onto ninth, is that ninth as it comes down into, no, it's capital as it comes. So they start on the opposite side of capital. So they go, they're going, closing ninth at the depot area. And then they, we cross over on Boise or university over onto capital and they go down capital all the way. So and then We'll be Sorry. stopping traffic on front and Myrtle for about 15 minutes as they pass through there. But Capitol itself is closed that whole 40 minutes? Typically, yeah. Okay. That's, and that's a long do some research. Yeah. Yeah, because we have routes that run that. So I have to figure that one out. Okay. I just needed that clarification. Thank you. That's all I had. Thank Great. You. Thank you. Dinko. Hi, good morning, Allison. Good morning. So just to confirm, uh, you stated that there will not be blimpy sandwiches or TCBY available? That is correct. Okay. Are there going to be any food vendors or just any foods offered to the participants? Um, just whole fruit, banana, or, um, bananas or oranges, or chocolate milk, and water at this point. Um, go, go, squeeze. Okay. And have you emailed our front office a notification of the event as well as an application? I've done the application and I just need to do the event notice. Okay, fantastic. So it sounds like it's gonna be deemed unregulated. So you won't have to you know, pay for a permit or be inspected, but uh, we just wanna document it. That is the case. So thank you. Yes. Cameo. Good morning. I do not have any questions. Um, this was always a well-run event, so thank you. Thank you. Great, thank you. All right, Conrad. Good morning, Allison. <laughs> uh, great job as always. Uh, great to work with, thank you. Um, I, I'm actually all good. I just confirmed with Vince on the parking situation, the meters, and we're good there. 
Uh, so I, I, I'll talk about the water bottles for a second. Uh, you said it's from Coke. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. Uh, Coke and Pepsi still make really good quality plastic bottles. So if it does come down to uh, providing water bottles, if, if they're the Coke brand, should be okay with that to recycle. Okay, uh, you may be double check with Ed, get his thoughts, but as far as I'm concerned, that should be okay. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, and then the milk, do you know if that's going to be in cartons or a bottle? I am not sure. I, I'm about 75%. It's going to be in a carton. Okay. Yeah, that would not be recyclable, but if they could provide uh, the little individual uh, bottles, yeah. then those should be okay as well. I'll and check on that. Thank you. And that's all I have. Hi, Allison. Um, we're set to go for you on parking. We have uh, the map and everything that we need around uh, Cecil Park. So we're set to go. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Morning. And I think I think we have the insurance that we need. I think we're all good there. Okay. I miss button. You guys are always so good. Thank you for reminding me to notify the depot the night before. So Thank you. we will remind any events over there not to park in the dirt lot or uh, east over. Right. So that'll be good. And other than that, we're just working. Good. And then just a the reminder about the sprinklers. Oh, yes. Yeah, for okay. the depot and for Cecil. Mm-hmm. And also let's do Julia Davis where you guys are going to oh. do your traffic volunteer. Great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and Allison, I believe you reached out to myself and Heather uh, about parking and business notifications. So we'll just continue working with you on that. Um, I think everything was looking pretty good, though. So Great. we just need to get that in. So thank you. Thank you, Allison. No questions from the fire prevention standpoint. None from operations as well. I did get your email about the closures on Maine and Idaho. I'm just waiting to talk with John about those. We're all set for the uh, basic staffing in the event. If we, depending upon the type of closure, we usually have to add a couple, Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't see any issues with that. Okay, great. Yeah. Hi, Allison. Good to see you again. Uh, Love this event. I love watching the kids run. It's very entertaining. If you haven't seen it, it's like watching like a miniature version of running of the bulls. They're great. (laughs) That's a good Um, The only thing I'd like to see is when we get that traffic control plan finalized, make Mm -hmm. sure that we understand what uh, resources are working so we can get that shared. Other than that, everything looks great. So thank you. Great. I'm good too. Great to see you again. Um, If you need anything, let me know. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Allison. Um, and I think, who do we have here for Saber, Idaho? Perfect. Never just you. Hey, good morning, Saver Idaho. Um, so I uh, have contracted with the Mine Commission to help them with this event this year. It's the 12th Saver Idaho. Um, it hasn't happened in a couple of years. Um, and uh, the event producers in the past, as well as the botanical garden staff in the past, as well as all of the um, permitting people of the past, no one is still around. So it's kind of starting from scratch in that regard. But um, I will walk you through a way of going on. Uh, It is out at the Botanical Gardens, but we're going through this process to kind of um, familiarize and put on paper how it works for the Wine Commission to kind of have as something to use going forward also. Um, The event this year is Sunday, June 12th. Uh, We are, uh, what we've changed this year is instead of having everybody come for the full length of the day, 
uh, we're capping how long people can be there. And so we'll actually be flushing out the gardens, resetting everything and then bringing um, the second wave of people in. Um, and that uh, has, in, has made a couple other changes as well, but that's kind of, a, that's kind of the biggest thing instead of letting everybody come at once. Um, I don't expect there to be too many more people signing up. So this is our current kind of count uh, as far as vendors that we have, um, I guess another big change for this year is instead of having any large tents, uh, we've eliminated that and um, everything will be individual 10 by 10s that we're providing the weights for. Um, so we won't have any of those large canopies. So all the wineries, all the exhibitors, the sponsors, all of that will be um, as individual spaces throughout the park. Um, and part of that is, is coming from, down from COVID too, just to eliminate one big space that people would be in. It really spread it out because uh, the Botanical Garden has got a lot of space to do that. So that lends itself very nicely to us. Um, this is currently, if there aren't any more, uh, the map on the right is kind of how we'll spread everybody around, not to scale. So those are supposed to be 10 by 10 tents, and that's obviously not the amount of space that they will take up. Um, but uh, we will kind of sprinkle through whether it's uh, a wine, uh, a winery themselves, one of our sponsor tents or one of the um, exhibitor uh, tents that are there. All of the three food vendors that we have, two of them are food trucks uh, that'll be in the dirt there uh, parking alongside the park uh, like they typically do at the Botanical Gardens if you've been there for um, any event that has had a food truck. Um, and the third one is actually pre-ordered uh, adult Lunchables from Albertson. So it's actually just a cold Cisco truck that we are handing those out to people that pre-purchased those. Um, they're not available to buy on site. And that's an old photo of an old Saver Idaho, but uh, to fill up some space. <laughs> Um, we, uh, I've added a couple of security guards this year. We've typically just had two. We're having four. Um, part of that is to, is to speed up the line as people come in, in those waves. And then also to assist us with flushing out the park, uh, between the waves. And so, uh, that's what resulted in the increase of two folks. Um, we bring, and also the botanical garden has first aid, uh, supplies out there, but we also contract with Ada County EMS. They haven't finalized that with us yet uh, for this year, but they've done that uh, for the last several. So I don't expect anything to change with that. It's just nice to have them on site just in case uh, it's a hot day. It also could be snowing, like Allison said. We have you never know. Um, the uh, botanical garden is already accessible, so we use the parking and uh, whatnot that they have there. Um, the bathrooms that are on site, as well as some that we bring in, are also that way. Um, and all of the different levels of grass have have uh, dirt ramp areas to get through, so we don't have to make any changes out there. Um, trash and recycling. Uh, again, the garden has what we need on site uh, to. Oops, I didn't mean to click. Um, to use that out there, we are going to pilot a new recycling glass program with them and find out if it is helpful um, and useful and a good use of everybody's time. So we're actually, they're going to supply some people and we're essentially going to be collecting uh, the glass and taking it somewhere different instead of letting it get mixed in or thrown into the trash um, to be determined if this event works for that or not, because there's a lot of glass bottles with this event. Um, we have in the past asked them to, if they end up booking a show or an event the night or two nights before to do an extra dump. Um, and that is to be determined if they book something and we need it or not. And then we typically just pay for that if that ends up being the case. Uh, we will have two bands playing each wave. Um, one band is staying the entire day and then the other one, somebody and then somebody different. So, but we have two locations, they'll be set up the entire time for entertainment. Um, I believe all of our insurance and permits are in, but I do not believe all the winery uh, individual permits are in yet. And that's something that we're just kind of going to have to keep working down the list of who do we need to bug uh, to pull their own um, license for that. Um, and that's probably going to be an ongoing thing over the next couple of weeks. Um, parking is there and bathrooms are there, but we also bring in an additional 12, including one of the, um, cool slushy trailers and, uh, 20 hand-washing stations. 
This is, so we provide to all of the ticket holders uh, a little mini loaf of bread and a bottle of water. Um, there's additional water there. And then, uh, like, I'm, as I mentioned, we've got our two food trucks, um, Crisp and La Crepe. I think they both have pulled their permits because they've sent them to me, but uh, I did not ask them. I, I forgot about the sticker uh, from the fire department myself. So I will double check that they've got that. And if not, push them on that. Um, the Moxie Java and the still vendors that are down there, they typically are giving like coffee to our, our team and doing samples of things, uh, but they should be, uh, have already pulled, I think what they need to be there as well. Um, the other exhibitors like City Peanut Shop and Chocolate Bar that's are closed, um, the same thing, they do samples and then prepackaged things. I believe the vendor list I sent included the hip hop hooray popcorn people. Um, but if it didn't, I will resend it after this. I made a note to resend it after this just in case because I, um, I may have missed them the last time I sent that. And then I know we are working through the process to have Idaho Brewers United there to do beer samples. That's happened in the past. Uh, the, all of the mix of types of permits out here make that a little tricky to sort through. So I think, uh, but I think we got it figured out um, talking with Kelly over the last few weeks about what they need to do. Um, so that's in the process. And then our retail license for the whole event comes from the co-op. They run the wine shop that is the to-go bottle sales from the event. Um, and then there is the ability for some of the wines to purchase uh, by the glass in addition. Um, that's not as popular as the sampling, but it is an option. Here's some specific alcohol information. It's 21 plus, so... Um, the Wine Commission loves babies is what they say, but not here. So uh, it's only 21 plus. Um, I kind of mapped out how this will go. So 1130, the first wave of people come in. Wineries will stop pouring 15 minutes to the end of that first wave so that there's a full 45 minutes before anybody would have been served something and they have to be out of the park. Um, that gives us a half an hour to reset everything and then do it again. Uh, let's see. And then just some other little points. Uh, the Botanical Garden has been pushing this information out to all of their members. Uh, they also have all of their own ingress and egress roads set up uh, with all of the gates and things that we put people at. So we should be covered there. Uh, we don't close any roads and we don't put any signage out for this. Um, and, uh, and then we've been pushing out that things may change from a COVID perspective. We follow what the Botanical Gardens and the city uh, have us do. And right now we're just saying, bring it because you never know. That's, I think all I've got. So I can take questions. Thank you, Carly. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna start with Conrad because I'm guessing you're very interested in this glass recycling pilot. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Maria. Me too, for what it's worth. Hey, yeah, um, I, I don't know where to start, but um, I'm obviously here if you have any questions and Ed as well. Um, there's a lot of options available. We can bring a dumpster down. I think they've got something they said already. They just, uh, it hasn't been, they're going to take on the trying to separate things as we go versus not to try to maximize getting more glass. Okay. Is, is what I understand. Um, but we'll be in touch, especially as they get, we get closer and we know if they actually book something leading up to this or not. Okay. Yeah. If, if you want help planning that, please reach out. Sure. Um, I think they have just a smaller three yard glass recycling bin. I could be wrong, but we can do larger roll offs too. Okay. I'll um, let them know that that's an option. And they definitely have the space for it. They definitely have the space for it. <laughs> but yeah, it's real simple. Um, it's just glass bottles, wine bottles, perfect example, labels on it. It's okay. No corks. Yep. Um, really, it's that simple and it's it's good material. Uh, empty. Yeah, this is probably not going to be an issue. I don't think so. <laughs> And uh, yeah, you already addressed my other concern, which was making sure that those dumpsters are on site and um, there's space in there available for you to share with the botanical gardens. Uh, they do have a couple roll offs mm -hmm. last time I checked, um, but it sound, I know you know the drill, so I'm not concerned about it. Um, they're still there. 
<laughs> What's that? I looked, they're still there. Okay, yeah. It, we've been hearing from the facilities there that they're getting pretty excited. It's gonna be a busy season, a lot of events this mm -hmm. year for them. So um, any, any help they need with coordinating things, uh, let them know they can reach out to us too. You got it. All right, thanks Carly. Mm -hmm. Carly, uh, we're set to go on parking. We have no concerns or anything for you. Thanks. Thank you. And I think we're set to go too. Thank Perfect. you. See? Yeah, we're all good. No questions from Boise Fire either. Sweet. Well, I'll say something to you, Carly. I so, figured you uh, would. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I've uh, been getting the wineries, sending the permission that's working mm -hmm. great. And uh, co-op got the catering permit. I guess we're just waiting to hear. If, if you hear from them or Derek, whoever's talking to ABC, just kind okay. of fill me in, have them fill me in as well. If they okay. about me. Yep. All right, thanks. Yep. Hi, Carly. Hi. Nice to see you. You too. Um, this is great. Wonderful. Thank you for putting all this together. Um, just to verify who would be our emergency contact down there. If I'll something happened, Jewel, perfect. Mm -hmm. That's all we need to know. Um, outside of that, we'll just compile the maps and the timelines and get that out to everybody that might need it. Perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Nice to see you again. <laughs> um, I don't have anything for you. I appreciate the continued communication. You guys opting into the process just to make sure you have your bases covered. Um, you know, as mentioned in the conversations we've had, it's, you know, you're after year, things tend to change um, with the property, with the licensing, with city code, you know, things like that. So we'll just keep evaluating and keep in touch. Yeah. If you need anything between now and then, don't hesitate to reach out. Thanks. Thank you. John. Good morning, Carly. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Two real simple things I would hope on your website for this. Would you encourage people to park? on site and not in the neighborhoods mm -hmm. and would you please please submit a type b permit to me no fee that's just so we can make sure it's on our our schedule because you're not going to impact old penitentiary uh, and you're not going to impact warm springs so we're not going to charge you i just want to make sure it's on our schedule so that we don't muck something else up in the area for you. Thanks. This is an easy one for between you and I. <laughs> Thanks so very much. And it's really good to see you again. Me too. Leslie. Nothing from us. Great. Dinko. Hi, good morning, Carly. Have you been in communication with our front office regarding an updated list of vendors? Um, I, I believe they have the most updated list, yes. I made a note, I'll send it to everybody just to make sure. I think the popcorn people are maybe the newest addition. So they should have that, yes. Okay, great. And also the, um, the exhibitors that are like showcasing or sampling their products, they too mm -hmm. need to turn in a temp temporary event application. They likely won't have to pay for a permit, but we just need to document that they are, in fact, uh, you know, unregulated. Yep, absolutely. We just sent a reminder last week to them that if they have not, they need to. So you may see it from everybody this week. Who knows? <laughs> but yes, thank you. I'll follow up. All right. We have plenty of time before the event, so you should be good to go. Thank you. Yep. And Cameo. Hi, Carly. Hello. I'll follow up with Stacy. Um, regarding your contract. And if you have any issues, just let me know. Okay. Thank you. Terrific. Thank you so much. Carly, a few of us are looking forward to attending and asking Lieutenant Nia to be our designated driver. Yes, I hope you all come. <laughs> We're a little more than half sold. So yeah, we'll see. Two we'll see thirds. if we can talk him into it. There you go. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, all right, we have a couple of events that may, may still be pending approval, so I'm just going to check them really quickly as they are meant to be this weekend. Um, Conrad, have you signed off on Capital City Public Market and Week of the Young Child? I have not. Uh, Capital City Market, if I'm thinking of the correct market, they were going to add trash service at the Sona building, and I have not seen that ordered yet. Okay. Um, and then week of the young child, that would, I, I could probably sign off on. Um, 
but they said that they were going to get back to me on a recycling plan, which I have not seen yet. I don't know if they're going to plan on uh, maybe asking Summer to use a recycling dumpster there at the park, and uh, that's a no-go. Or uh, if they plan on self-hauling away from the park or bringing in a dumpster, I just need to know which way. Okay, great. Kelly, maybe you can just take note as we're going down and follow up with the event organizers. Um, all right, same question for Central District Health. Dinko, have you signed off on Capital City Public Market in the week of the young child? Dinko, do we still have you? Maybe. Okay. Um, Ada, County, Ada County paramedics. Cameo? I believe I checked off on all of those. Yes. Okay. Great. Thank you. And last one on Capital City Public Market is Office of Emergency Management. Thank you, Maria. I just pulled it up and signed it off and I will get all the stuff compiled and out to emergency services. So I was just waiting to make sure their map was finalized. Great. Thank, thank you. you. Um, week of the Young Child Parks. We can sign off. Okay. ACHD. I think we're good with that. I'll double check with Debbie and if we haven't signed off on it, we will. Okay. DBA. Uh, we are actually waiting on their community notification um, okay. and a few things uh, from them, but I'm, I know Heather reached out, I believe yesterday. So okay. hopefully they get that back to us. We can sign off. Great. Thank you. Um, and then I, I think I saw Dinko's name reappear. Yes, I'm here. Okay. Terrific. Right, have you signed off on Capital City Public Market um, or a week of the young child? Yes, we have. Terrific. Thank you so much. All right, no pending after action reports. Nice to be in the room with all of you again and to virtually see those of you online. We'll uh, see you at our next meeting. Thanks everyone.